you've built the ultimate home server. I mean, look at this. We got the, the Gigabyte chassis, all the cores, and then we got the older Google search appliance, the disk shelves. It's got terabytes and terabytes of movies and media and music and all the applications and literally anything we could possibly need. But it's at home. How do you access it remotely? Well, WireGuard. And we've done a ton of videos on WireGuard. Usually it's from, you know, connecting internally to externally. But you can also use WireGuard to connect back to that from anywhere, even if your internet connection is crappy. We're gonna talk about it, and I'm gonna show you how on the Level 1 Forum. Let's take a look. So what's up? I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. This is another video in our Ultimate Home Server series. But your Ultimate Home Server is not really super useful if you can't get to it everywhere. Part of the reason that everybody uses cloud services for everything is the convenience and ubiquity of it. But you can use WireGuard on your home internet connection and use WireGuard on your mobile devices. It's in the app stores for both Google and iOS and have a secure connection back to your home network. Now in the past, Level 1 has done videos where we show you how to run services on your home internet connection. Some ISPs have a problem with that. In fact, your, your home internet connection can be three different kinds in terms of like connectivity. The first kind will give you a public IP address. Most of the time that IP address changes from time to time. We'll take a look at over overcoming that with Duck DNS, a dynamic DNS service, but there's lots of dynamic DNS services. You can also have carrier grade NAT at home, which means that your home internet connection doesn't get a real IP address. And that's okay because we can still use WireGuard, just the way that Ryan showed you in the previous video with WireGuard where you set up WireGuard somewhere in the cloud and you connect to that and you have your own private VPN server. Well, if you do that with your phone and your phone connects to that same private WireGuard server in the cloud, then your phone can connect back to your home connection even if you've got carrier grade NAT. We've got a full guide for that on the level one forum. And so you can go step by step and configure that. And the third scenario, which is really the most doomsday scenario, is that you can't even change any configuration on your router. In that case, if you're rocking something like TrueNAS Scale or TrueNAS Core, you can actually run WireGuard right on your media appliance, right on your home server appliance. This isn't quite as good. You gotta jump through some extra hoops to connect all the dots, but if you do that, you run WireGuard on the server, the server connects out to your small instance on Linode, and, uh, and then your phones and stuff can connect to that, and then you still have that connection back to your media server. Now, if you wanna run uh, Steam, you can use Steam Play and that kind of thing uh, in all of those scenarios, but you gotta jump through some extra hoops to tell the computers on your network, hey, when you wanna access the WireGuard network, you gotta go through the media server, not our ISP's router. So. Uh, that one's a little more involved. That one probably could be its own separate video. If you'd like to see that or if you're in that situation, let me know. Hit me up on the forum at Level 1 Techs. There's a guide there that'll walk you through that. But in any of those scenarios, the server that you're hosting at Linode can be a very, very small instance. It can be very inexpensive. Obviously, we've got terabytes and terabytes of storage in our media server here. It's not really a media server, but if this were our media server, uh, we've got terabytes and terabytes of storage and, you know, yeah, hosting that in Linode, that's crazy. But on a very inexpensive instance, you know, $5 a month, $10 a month, something like that, you can use that as the gateway. That system, this system maintains a connection to that system. You connect to that system on the internet and then you can get back to this one. How much bandwidth do you need? Well, if your home internet connection is at least 2 megabit, that's going to be enough to stream music and movies. If you're home internet connection has a bunch of people on it, two megabits might not be enough. But uh, it's the upload, it's the upload capacity that matters because you're not downloading anything, you're transmitting things. Um, it can get a little weird, but not a huge deal. All right, now I'm back to my desk to talk a little bit about the networking side of this. Basically, we've got to connect with WireGuard from our phone to our internal home system. And I want to walk you through that just talking about it and walking you through the guide so that you're mentally, your mentally, your your head is in the right space. I'm also working on the guide for the step-by-step. -step. I don't really want to do guides where people mindlessly copy-paste commands into the terminal without understanding what's happening. So 
If you watched past level 1 videos, we've been big proponents of building your own router, going back years, and we usually use PFSense because it's so flexible and it's so easy. It's really the best of both worlds. Um, if you set up PFSense, or if you already have PFSense, you can set up WireGuard on your PFSense router. And your PFSense router is where your ISP, your internet connection coming in, hits your network. That gives you the most flexibility, the most control, the most everything. In the past, we forwarded ports for things like our HA proxy video, where you can just run this stuff directly naked on the internet. That's fine, but this is a little more secure and this is a little bit more, uh, you know, less opening everything up to the world because anybody on the internet can access those services unless you go through extra steps to set the rules. Whereas with WireGuard, nothing can access it unless they uh, are specifically allowed to connect to your network. It's deny all. Uh, versus allow all if you want to think of it that way and you can also run some internal services that are a little bit more fast and loose <laughs> when you've got your wire guard set up if you uh, can't run a pfSense system or you don't have a pfSense system that is okay the guide will walk you through that see we're using TrueNAS scale for this but this would also work with TrueNAS core and TrueNAS the underlying operating system also has support for WireGuard it can be a WireGuard server or it can be a WireGuard client what that means is that the media server itself, you can connect from your phone to the media server, assuming that you have a public IP address and that you can forward a port through your router. If you don't, then you can look at Ryan's guide on the uh, setup of WireGuard. Ryan did a great video where you use Linode. It's a really small instance in Linode and you do your own VPN. And so your, you know, your desktop computer is going to connect to Linode and then your ISP can't spy on your traffic or, you know, whatever reason you might have for doing that. Well, you can also connect multiple devices to that Linode instance. And in this case, if you can't forward a port or your ISP is persnickety or you don't even have a public IP address, you can have your media server connect to Linode and your phone connects to Linode and your desktop computer connect to Linode. Well, you wouldn't with your desktop computer if it's on the same network as, as, your, as your media server. But all the devices connecting to Linode, once they do that, they can all see each other. They can all see their, their own WireGuard IP addresses. So whatever IP address you assign, you'll be able to get to that IP address through your WireGuard connection. And that's kind of what the, the guide on the forum is walking you through here. So there's some different scenarios, and, th and that's what it means. Also, Tom from Lawrence Systems did a really great uh, guide on setting up PFSense with WireGuard. Up through about 10, 12 minutes in that video is very relevant to what I'm talking about here. So if you need a step, he's like, okay, you've convinced me, PFSense. You need a step-by-step -step walkthrough with a focus on setting up WireGuard specifically on PFSense. That will walk you through it, and you can totally do that. Now, it's convenient if your IP address never changes, like this IP address is me, it very seldom changes, I can always go to that IP address from my phone. But if your ISP changes your IP address from time to time, then it can be a little annoying because it's like, oh, my wire guard on my phone's not working, what do I use? Well, enter dynamic DNS. Dynamic DNS is a service where there's a little program that runs and every so often it hits a website and it updates a DNS name. A DNS name is like www.google.com www.google.com is not useful by itself for the computer. That has to be converted into a number, uh, which is an IP address, which is the address of the computer that will give you that web page. Well, that's what DuckDNS does for you, except at a, at a very small scale. On PFSense or, or, or TrueNAS or anything, you can set up a cron job. That is a scheduled job, and DuckDNS has the walkthrough for that. So you sign up and you get a key, and you get a URL that you paste in. And you just tell PFSense, you know, every four hours or, or once a day or, you know, ever how often your IP address typically changes uh, to run that command. And when that command runs, whatever device ran that command will make an internet connection out to DuckDNS with your key. And DuckDNS notices the source IP address that that request came from. And then it'll update your DNS name. So you can have, you know, foo something .duckdns.org when you sign up. You'll, you'll pick a name. Uh, you can also do your own DNS name. That's no problem. You can set up your own custom domain name. Typically, these services range from free to about $5 a year. There are more expensive services, but don't, you don't, this is not an expensive dynamic DNS service. You should not be paying more than $5 a year. And DuckDNS, for the scenario that I'm talking about here, is pretty much free, very close to free. So with DuckDNS and WireGuard, you can set up your DuckDNS address in your phone, and then no matter what your IP address is, as long as that, that command runs periodically enough, you'll be able to connect from your phone back to your WireGuard instance at home.
It's like somebody with their, their phone number keeps changing, but every time their phone number changes, they call their friend Bob. It's like, Bob, hey, here's my new number. And you don't know what their number is, but you know Bob's number. And you can go ask Bob, hey, what's their new number? And it's, here you go. That's what DuckDNS is doing for you. Because you have your media server at home with all of your music and movies and everything else that you want, and you're working on ingesting things, you can do away with all of your subscriptions to everything. Yeah, you might have to wait for The Mandalorian to come out on DVD or, you know, something <laughs> or alternatives. But once you have it on your storage system, once you have the physical media, you have it forever. You're not going to pay for it from now until the end of time. Most people don't realize how much money it really costs to have these subscription services from now until the end of time. I mean, some of you have probably been subscribed to Netflix for decades. <laughs> Whip out a spreadsheet and do the math right now. I think you'll be surprised at how much money that really is. It is a staggering amount of money. And it's only getting worse because cable TV is shockingly bad. They don't really have a very high bar to cross. But the scary thing is, if you look at Netflix's breakdown numbers, I mean, they've got hit shows like The Witcher, sure, but a lot of their streaming is actually older stuff. Things like Star Trek The Next Generation and Knight Rider and things like that. We get the Knight Rider box set for like 35 bucks for, you know, all five, six seasons, whatever it was. And Star Trek the Next Generation, when it originally came out, was like $120 a season. But now you can get pretty much everything. If you take those DVDs and you transcode them onto your media server, you have those forever. Forever, forever. As long as you do good backups. And the functionality is potentially just as easy and seamless as Netflix. In fact, our next video is on setting up Mediadrome. And Mediadrome uh, can do some things that some of the music service, music streaming services can't in terms of streaming to devices, other devices on your local network. So you can have it on your phone, but you can also have it in your whole house stereo. So look for that, that's coming up. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at, yes, you can wire guard all the things. You can self host your stuff and not spend a bunch of money. I try to keep this as an overview so that I'm not got an hour long video. The guide on the forum's pretty good. It's got screenshots if you run into problems. Some of our past videos too will also help you out. Uh, let me know, we'll figure it out. Maybe I can do a follow up video. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.